Hi guys, um, in this stream we're going to build um, a very simple RESTful client and a server. What I essentially want to do is to have um, Space Invaders app um, game here and instead of saving the high score to um, the local file system and reading from it, um, I want to push the score to the server and then um, be able to retrieve from it which will uh, essentially make, uh, make a very basic sort of um, leaderboard kind of system. And um, to do that, I have a very simple um, Spring sort of tutorial based application, which I've simply uh, modified very um, slightly and added this data structure which is very useful for us because it has a name and it has a score. And this is what we're going to use essentially. So what I've done is um, I put score and get score um, request mappings, which we are going to use. And we have a um, scores hash map, which allows us to map the name to the score. So it's very simple. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is first compile that thing. So this is the server part. And I also have a Raspberry Pi on the network. So what I'm gonna do is host the server on the Pi and um, attempt to build something on the client side. So that's been built. And if we go to workspace, create directory, um, code spring, Do this here. I also need to connect to the by itself. All right, so that's uploaded. Um, just waiting for that thing. Uh, right, uh, workspace, what did we call it, spring? That'll take a while to start. Uh, meanwhile, what we can do is use this application, which I prepared from a tutorial again, um, that allows us to build um, an HTTP client and connect to some can uh, make a get request essentially. And these two, um, I'm going to use a get as get requests. So I'm um, keeping things simple. This is the IP of the Pi. Um, I'm going to use the same port. Um, I called it put score name and um, XGL test score a thousand and see if that works and the stuff we'll get back is JSON I believe um, yeah so that's starting on the server still if there are any exceptions um, catch them and that should do it How do we have here? Um, here it's save data, well, pretty much the same as um, the score data that we have, so it'll be very easy to rename um, to replace these things. Um, but this is how we are going to send data, um, and hopefully that works. So that's started, um, and we're just going to run this. See what happens. Cool, I think that's worked. Um, which means that we should be able to see some stuff in there. Yep, and uh, might be able to retrieve it. 
So it's get score and um, name is of XGL test, which is sent back as an object score data. So we should be able to deserialize it uh, into an actual object, which means I need to have the object definition somewhere. I'm just going to copy that. Um, that is JSON creator as JSON property thing. JSON property name and JSON property score. So that should be um, that should be enough for the mapper to easily deserialize the thing into an object of type score data. Read um, what we're what we're reading from response entity and content. So that's the input stream that comes from that request, and we're deserializing it into score data. And just so we know it works, we're going to print score and also name. So the server's running, um, that should give us a thousand four four. Why is that? Oh, there is no get name. That, that's supposed to be get score. There we go. Uh, right, so now we have a code snippet that works um, both ways. Um, yeah, so we have to somehow map that to the game, which means I'll have to. So we're using actually because it's scored data. It's not actually. The object that is being sent, it's, it's serialized form, which means we can, I think, use that instead and basically make the mapper thing that say data is the object that we're sending um, across the network. That and also that. That will simplify things a lot if this does work. Uh, which means we can then do something like this. Have a method called read data or something. Uh, read score and write score and we'll fix the signatures slightly um, a little bit later. All right, this doesn't have the dependency, which samples does. Um, so I'll just copy this into games project object model, and that should just go away. Cool. Import, import, import. This is no longer score data, this is save data. This is save data. So get high score, yes. So we know there is a user effects GL test with score a thousand. So instead of reading it from the local file system, we should be able to read from the network, from the server. Initialize game is run um, on the background thread when the whole game is initialized, so that should just work. And what do we need exactly? Save data, right? So that is save data, and hopefully we can return that data. Here, catch. Um, right. 
Let's return um, some kind of empty data in that case. Um, not found. There we go. And score is just one. Again, when we um, try to build these things, we'll most of the time go for the quick and dirty solution and fix all of the things along the way uh, once the solution actually exists. Uh, exists. That is that. We get a here. Yeah, so that should just work, right? One way to find out. Um, get read score. Actually, null is fine because that checks for null anyway. So yeah, cool. If something fails, just return null. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So we're just getting to read. If you remember, the score originally was three thousand, um, and that was read from this file somewhere. High score. That I think that's the one. Maybe. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, so that was the file it was reading from. By um, remember, it was three thousand, which means if no, it's. The wrong application. Close that. Run this. So if it's a thousand now, then it works. Um, that's the sign essentially. Yay, it's a thousand. Uh, which means that the retrieval and um, the retrieving method worked. So what we need to do is now add the saving method if we save it to say um if we get a 2000 um in score and we save that and then we can load it and um, that is going to be a success essentially for this video this is where it saves to the file system and this is where we are where we want the thing to save to uh, there. So actually, I'm just going to copy this. And in fact, we might even have um, an interface in the future where you can kind of, uh, depending on your context, just allow it to say whether it's file system, whether it's a network system or whatever. Read score, high score, um, write score takes save data and does that. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to copy and paste that for now. Again, um, if you're copy pasting stuff um, and you still have copy paste code, that means there's something wrong with the design. So we'll fix that at some point. So if you remember, that will return the right uh, will return greeting object which is from the tutorial which i'm still ignoring and that should be put score name comes from the date itself so get name then the asterisk sign uh, plus the score which is data get high score which is read from that. So as you can see, it's very useful to be able to have these data structures. They'll simply wrap around the um, data that you need to pass from um, place to place. Um, what's it saying? Another one, right. So is it executed on the background thread? I don't think so, but I should still be fine because we're exiting afterwards. Because I don't want it to be executed on the background thread while exiting on the main thread. Because in which case, um, the system will just shut down. So right score and yes, that should work. 
So we're now going to score um, greater than the thousand that we have, and only in that case will we be given an option to save, which means I need to kill a few things. Got an achievement. Um, so yeah, let's go up to two thousand. So that's two thousand, and now how do I? Ah, oh, right, I'm supposed to die now, so that it that will prompt me to save my high score. I should have removed these walls. One more life. Um, come on, shoot me. Right, uh, continue. No. Enter name. Okay. So that should have saved, maybe, because that should have executed that, right? And there were no exceptions. And if I reload now, it should... Actually, no, it will still get um, the thousand because the username is hard-coded, which means that we have to find um, a way in the future to return the highest score, which might just be a single field, you know, um, so we don't have to hard code the name. But just to check that the save actually worked, that should return 2000 um, with the appropriate username. Cool, it does. Um, so, yeah, now we have a um, somewhat functional server and a client which I might um, merge into the core of FXGL into kind of some networking package where we should be able to um, create servers quite easily because most games um, will have some kind of scoreboard system if not a scoreboard then you could you know use um, any kind of data structure you want and um, pass around various other things like um i know you can even save an account data if you're thinking about some sort of mmo games but uh, we've achieved the goal for the stream and um, i'm happy to finish at this stage um so yeah see you guys and thanks for watching